で見つかった時に、えー、その当時ちょっとこれは P 入れてほしいんですけども、えーの方に、えー、奴隷として、えー、300万で買い取るというふうなことがあったんでそれはあ派遣さ、えー、他の国に、えー、行きました。They used to have limits on what they would do and wouldn't do. They don't have any of those limits now. When you have Yakuza with you, you can hold any kind of rally, carry out any kind of blackmail. You can come with a crowd and a megaphone to a political opponent and yell whatever you want. The Yakuza have been one of the world's largest and most powerful criminal organizations for centuries, but in the 1970s, their power grew to an unprecedented level, and it was all thanks to the CIA. Wait, what? You heard right, and it gets worse. Today, the Yakuza still does atrocious things that send shivers down the spines of people around the world. How do they make their money, and why did the CIA help them grow? We'll explore these questions and many more in today's video. The Yakuza beginnings are older than most criminal organizations. Their exact origin is hard to determine, but they are thought to have descended either from gangs of ronin, masterless samurai who turned to banditry, or from bands of do gooders who defended villages from those same wayward samurai during the early 17th century. Their lineage has also been traced to grifters and gamblers in Japan's feudal period. The word Yakuza, good for nothing, is believed to have derived from a worthless hand in a Japanese card game similar to blackjack. The cards Yakuza, eight Nine, three. When added up, give the worst possible total. So, in a way, when you join the Yakuza, you embrace damnation. なくなっております。僕は親分が好きだったんですね。そしてその親分に対して一つだけ嘘をついてしまったことがあるんです。そしてその嘘に対して僕が耐えきれなくて、そして親分に対して申し訳ない。The Yakuza criminal organizations work on such a tight discipline and code of honor that many people punish themselves before their boss can do it. And most Yakuza members lose a pinky one way or another as a gesture that they are fully committed to their group. で、えー、これがなぜじゃあ小指を切るのかという部分に関しては、日本人は刀を持ってました。その時に昔はこの小指がすごく大事だったんで、えー、その感覚をもうなくしてしまえと。Still, it's safe to assume that a centuries old cluster of criminal organizations has changed its values in time. However, Being a Yakuza still means perpetrating violence and putting yourself in harm's way on a daily basis. So, why did you sign up to that? The Yakuza is a way of life more than one single criminal organization. The Yakuza are 22 different designated organized crime groups that make their money in Japan from gambling, extortion, drug dealing, prostitution, child pornography, blackmail, fraud, increasingly, and any other crime that you can think of. If you ask me, their code of honor is pretty hypocritical. They're all about blindly respecting your bosses, but they condone things that would make any moral person shiver. They used to have limits on what they would do and wouldn't do, they don't have any of those limits now. Throughout the 20th century, the Yakuza got more violent and more reckless. Their regard for human life is almost null, so it's pretty shocking to think the CIA was responsible for their growth. In the 1970s, the growth of the terrifying Yakuza started with this man. His name was Mitsuyasu Meino, and he was a low grade action movie actor, but he was also acting in adult films. On March 26, 1976, he rented an airplane. Photographed himself in front of it and wearing a kamikaze uniform, rammed it into an apartment building. The building belonged to Yoshi Okudama, one of the big Yakuza bosses and a right wing ultra nationalist. Mitsuyasu lost his life in the crash, but Kodama survived. He was on a different floor in the building, recovering from a stroke. Kodama was often called the second man after the emperor. This is how much power he yielded over the Japanese mafia and politics at the time. The man connecting Mitsuyasu Mayano and Yoshi Okodama was a famous Japanese writer, Yukio Mishima. He was a three time Nobel Prize nominee and considered one of the most influential writers of the 20th century. After World War II, 
Kodama created Japan's largest national movement, but he needed an ideologist to promote his ideas. Enter Yukio Mishima. Mishima started writing harsh criticism against America. In his works, he painted America as a corrupt force engulfing the Western world. Sadly, he also condoned harsh nationalism and the expulsion of any foreigners from Japan. It was a way to revive the samurai era, he said. But the Americans didn't really want to leave Japan. So Mishima and his group decided to stage a coup d'etat. In 1970, he seized the building of the Ministry of Self-Defense. He climbed to the balcony and gave a powerful speech to thousands of mesmerized and terrified people watching from below. He urged the Japanese people to throw the barbarians out and rebuild traditional Japan. There was no reaction, bar a few people gaping their mouths in disbelief. So Mishima performed seppuku. This was a very painful way to go, but in his mind, it would have the most effect on the crowd. And of course, it pertained to traditional Japan. To spare him the agony, his comrades ended his life in a quicker way. This whole horrific ordeal was filmed in real time and shown on TV. After this, Mishima became a nationalist hero. His idea was successful and an inspiration to actor Mitsuyasu Maeno. His kamikaze plan was just as dramatic as Mishima's actions six years prior. But here's where the CIA comes in. Shortly after Mitsuyasu rammed his airplane into Yoshio Kodama's home, it was discovered that Kodama was lobbying in Japan for the interest of Lockheed Martin, the American military corporation. The Americans had paid Kodama millions of dollars, which was worth even more in the 1970s, to promote Lockheed and sell their aircraft. This was an outrage to Japanese locals. Kodama claimed to be a nationalist. He was also at the head of Japan's giant Yakuza organization. He spoke of tradition, honor, and keeping the Americans out. And yet he promoted the very corporation that had bombed Japan and reduced many cities to ashes just a few decades before. People weren't pleased. The more law enforcement dug into him, the more they learned. Soon enough, it was discovered that Kodama was an undercover CIA agent. Wait. What? A CIA agent was at the top of the Yakuza in the 1970s? Yep, he was recruited while he was in a U.S. prison after World War II. He was released with one task, create a pro-American anti-communist government in Japan. Yep, it all boils down to America's desperate attempts to stop the spread of communism. Remember how they promoted the white powder trade in South America and even funded its cartels just to stop the when trade in Asia's communist countries? That's a story for another video. In 2005, Yoshio Kodama's CIA file was declassified and shared with the public. Yoshio Kodama, pronounced Kodama, is one of the most powerful men in Japan. He was instrumental in founding the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, had a hand in naming several prime ministers, and had settled disputes among top businessmen. Indeed, he was instrumental in founding the party that is still ruling today. He commands the allegiance of Japan's ultra-rightists and is blood brother to a number of of Yakuza, leaders of the Japanese underworld. Kodama's power, which he skillfully wields from behind the scenes, rests in his considerable wealth, both monetary and in obligations owed him for past favors. He uses his wealth lavishly to sponsor like-minded politicians and patriotic youth movements and to encourage the martial arts, a military alliance among anti-communists. So the entire Japanese political system was founded from the mingling of the Yakuza and the CIA. Could it be that authorities use the Yakuza to fight their political opponents, the communists? Of course, sure. It was called match and pump, or burn and fill with gasoline. That is to provoke a political opponent and then punish them for their reaction. It's pretty crazy how the Yakuza were involved in well-known political manipulation tactics, and they were instrumental in keeping communism out of Japan. They gathered teenagers, various hooligans who influenced and carried out educational work with the electorate. Also speaking of various political organizations, electoral circles included some Yakuza people. Stating the obvious, but neither extreme is bad. And to counter the potential dangers of communism, perfectly exemplified by North Korea, the Yakuza turned to the other extreme. The Yakuza often created right-wing groups. I had one myself, where I recruited fighters. And we taught our opponents a couple of things. When you have Yakuza with you, you can hold any kind of rally, carry out any kind of blackmail. You can come with a crowd and a megaphone to a political opponent and yell whatever you want. In other words, the CIA made the Yakuza more powerful to achieve their own political goals. 
but after they were done with them, the Yakuza continued to grow, and the things they did for money are disturbing, to say the least. Today, the CIA is no longer involved, at least not as actively, in Japanese politics or the Yakuza. The CIA gave money to the Liberal Democratic Party and its members in the 1950s and the 1960s to gather intelligence on Japan, make the country a bulwark against communism in Asia, and undermine the Japanese left, said retired intelligence officials and former diplomats. Since then, the CIA has dropped its covert financial aid and focused instead on gathering inside information on Japan's party politics and positions in trade and treaty talks, retired intelligence officers said. The Yakuza are in decline as the Japanese government imposes ever stricter rules and punishments against their crimes. Well, they're in decline because the laws have gotten better. They criminalized paying off the Yakuza. The Yakuza now can't collect money from people. They can't get a phone. They can't get a hotel room. So more and more people are leaving the Yakuza and trying to find a new life for themselves. Those that remain, however, well, violence is their philosophy. Violence is how they punctuate their sentences. Every single thing is a fight. Every conversation is the beginning of an argument. Their fists, Japanese swords, wooden swords, baseball bats, um, bicycles. In Kabukicho, one of the classic ways when the Yakuza got in a fight is they'd pick up a bicycle and they'd smash it on someone. As of 2023, the Yakuza is still filled with notorious short-tempered bosses who take a life for being looked at the wrong way. This is Koiki, an old-school Yakuza boss known for his violent outbursts. Imagine being known for violence amidst an already violent group. Koiki is nothing like the original Yakuza members from hundreds of years ago. He prides himself on being cruel. And Koiki doesn't just remove his enemies from rival gangs or Yakuza traders. He genuinely takes pleasure in inflicting pain. <laughs> Koiki doesn't show an ounce of regret for what he's done. In fact, he's proud he's at the top of the organization, as he believes the Yakuza would suffer if he would quit or be arrested. So, for example, it's almost funny he doesn't see himself as a hoodlum doing what he does. But that's the problem with psychopathic dictatorial figures in positions of power. They don't realize they're wrong in so many ways. And if you tell them this, you might lose your life. So many people around them just end up doing their bidding for fear. They might lose their life or their families. This former Yakuza member pointed out the irony of this criminal organization. Indeed, the Yakuza is all about strict rules, and yet it only makes money from illegal, violent affairs. By the way, are there women in the Yakuza? There is also a general Yakuza rule about avoiding incidents with women. However, just like most rules, it's regularly broken. And we can't really see the Yakuza as respectful toward women when one of their biggest sources of income is the illegal street worker industry and various loopholes around it. How's it going? Have you got clients? Yes, sir. Hello, gorgeous. How's the clientele? It's fine. Meanwhile, they portray themselves as a positive collective character, protecting people from harm and even volunteering after natural disasters. Once the Yakuza helped you with something, you're indebted for life. 
They will keep asking for money and harass you if you don't pay up. Of course, things can take a turn for the worst if you refuse. いなくなることを払わなくなっていなくなることを専門用語で飛ぶって言うんですけどこれはめちゃくちゃ多いです。で見つかった時にその当時ちょっとこれは P 入れてほしいんですけども。の方に奴隷として300万で買い取るというふうなことがあったんでそれは派遣さ他の国に。Yeah, the Yakuza are involved in every heinous thing you can Now, and some members are even leaving the group. But as long as there's money to be made from illegal businesses, there will be people joining organizations like the Yakuza. Is there any way to stop them forever? Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about the Yakuza? Do you know of other criminal organizations in Asia? Let me know in the comments. And before you leave, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time.